So we mentioned that histomark is important for telling us uh, what regions are important, uh, including annotating the genes, um, marking the beginning of the genes, and also uh, finding the enhancers in the genome. One difficulty indeed is uh, one student asked, how do you decide which histomarks to profile? And so um, this is partially depending on the biological question, partially dependent on the availability of high quality antibodies for that particular histomarks. Um, ideally, you want some kind of assay that can give you like really high resolution uh, transcription factor binding site. And uh, one assay that was super informative is DNA's hypersensitivity profile or DNA seq. So DNA is an enzyme that can randomly cast in the genome. In fact, if you have uh, like a naked DNA, you use DNAs, eventually it will, it will cut the whole DNA you know, with enough time all to single nucleotide, just really sh shatter the nucleus, uh, the, the genome into small, like a sh smaller and smaller uh, regions in the genome. Um, but then for this situation, we're using the DNA's enzyme to cut not the naked DNA, but to cut the chromatin. Uh, which you know have different level of you know like a rubber band, a different level of uh, tight or openness. And interestingly, when this happened, the, the DNA is cuts the easy regions first, which are the open chromatins that it you know like it was just accessible. You can imagine when you have a rubber ball, the inside is really difficult to get to, but the surface is easier, right? The open regions are easier to cut, and so. And this one, we also don't use a complete digestion. We use a very very limited digestion. And so um, it will more cut, you know, by chance, say it only cuts every 12 or 20 kb. But then in these regions that are really open, nucleosome region, nucleosome free regions, have histomark locations with K27 acetylation, these are kind of open polymerase two regions, which are, you know, promoters or transcription start site. And in those regions, it could be by chance DNAs will make two cuts in nearby regions that are only, you know, like uh, maybe a few uh, 50, K, sorry, 50 base pair or uh, 200 base pair apart. And so after the DNA's digestion, we ran them through a, a gel or a size selection and only select the short fragments that are, say, less than 300 base pair fragments and then do high throughput sequencing or maybe between 50 and 300 because you don't want to sequence the single nucleotide sequence. Um, and then with that, um, you, you can run again, similar to the histomark chip seq, you map them into the genome and uh, you can see this is kind of what the DNA's signal profile look like. Um, interestingly, if you look at each transcription factor chip seq data, you can see this is you know, from the ENCODE project. They have profiled many different transcription factors together. But if you combine all of their worries together to do a combined chip seq density, it really tracks with the DNA's hypersensitivity profiles. And so DNAs really give you a overall high resolution a map of all the transcription factor binding sites. Um, and so, so this is a really fantastic experiment. Um, another experiment, which is also uh, uh, looking at the chromatin accessibility or open chromatin region, is uh, a later experiment that was uh, developed for about five years now by um, uh, Howard Chang and uh, Will Greenleaf's lab at Stanford. And so for this is called a TACSEQ. They use an enzyme called TN5. This um, is an enzyme that uh, virus use to integrate their you know, transposome or genome into another genome. Uh, you, you probably know that RNA, in order to, you know, you, you, some RNA virus would incorporate their genome, uh, or convert to DNA and then incorporate their genome into, into the host genome. And they use this type of transposase to insert their genome into the, the host genome. And so this is an enzyme that's kind of available. Um, and so it, it has kind of a DNA in it and, or transposon in it. And then it will cut into the genome and insert the transposon region into the, the, the host genome. And again, when it does the insertion, 
It also prefers to cut and insert near the open chromatin region, such as promoters enhancers. And so it has a similar preference against the, uh, towards the uh, open chromatin. And um, the, the nice thing about this is now, instead of using the transposon, we can give it other DNA sequence. And now uh, scientists discovered we can give it DNA sequencing adapters. And so if you, you like hy hybridize the, trans, uh, the TN5 with the DNA sequencing adapter, it will cut and insert the sequencing adapter into the genome. And after that, all you need to do is to PCR amplify. And so if say there are two cuts, you know, one is in here, one in there, and when you use PCR to amplify, you know, one blue primer, one red primer, it will be able to amplify the sequence in between. And uh, especially PCR amplification also favored shorter fragments and you, so you amplify the 100, 200 base pair fragments out, whereas the, 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 the cut and the insertion that happened, you know, like 50 kb away will have, you know, smaller chance to be amplified. And so then you, you just PCR amplify them out and then sequence out the, uh, you know, fra shorter fragments. And this experiment is really, really easy to do. And again, you can see here, this is the ataxic profile. This is the uh, DNA's profile. It's quite similar or approximately uh, similar signals. And so these uh, type of profiles are very useful. Um, again, similar to a histomark chip seek, we do not need a priori any knowledge on what transcription factors are important in that particular cell or tissues. We just do the taxi profile, chromatin accessibility profile, and use either the motif or other public chip seek to tell us which transcription factors might be important. And again, uh, the chromatin accessibility signal that the, the signal peaks actually tell us whether the transcription factor uh, binding is important. The TF binding strength doesn't matter, but the histone mark or the chromatin accessibility binding, you know, like whether it's a tenfold or fiftyfold. Uh, enrichment that actually tell us that this is having stronger effect. Uh, in both the DNAs and the taxi, the peaks are enriched in both the promoters. Uh, this kind of indicates potential active genes in the cells and on the enhancers, which can inform us about the relevant transcription factor binding. The advantage of DNAs is it's a very comprehensive peaks. Um, the peaks are very, very high resolution. A lot of these peaks are less than 200 base pair in resolution. So for motif finding, for figuring out what transcription factors find there, it's really super helpful. The difficulty there is this experiment is very difficult to do. If you're not careful, the DNA's digestion happened too much, your DNA are all digested into too short fragments. And if you don't digest it well enough, the fragments are too far and it's not enriched near the open chromatin regions. And so a taxi now is becoming more popular because it's very easy to do. You know, any, you know, like a student can learn and do this experiment and generate really good quality data. And it's also really fast because the ataxic protocol and the, and the Illumina sequencing protocol are basically the same experiment. And so you can just do this uh, together and it requires less starting material uh, you can start with you know a few hundred cells, thousands of cells, or tens of thousand cells. Whereas DNA is usually you will need about ten to a hundred million cells to do. Uh, recently, even single cell ataxy technique has been invented and it's actually working very very well. So it's really popular. And so in terms of how to analyze this data, again, you know, it's very similar to a histomark chip seek. You do the read mapping, you call the peaks, do the QC. Um, you can search for motifs from the peaks, especially near the enhancer regions, if you remove all the annotated transcription star sites from, you know, ref reference genome. You can identify the TI family. Um, you can use the DNAs or ataxic regulatory potential to tell us which genes are potentially active in the cell. And you can also use the uh, ataxic or DNA signals to inform, you know, how to weight the, the TF binding um, on different uh, locations. And you can overlap the DNAs and ataxy peaks with ChIP-seq data to find the relevant transcription factors using Systrom Toolkit. Okay, so that's our, some of the basic analysis.